this is Lake Michigan. The uh, Muskegon State Park right there. And we're gonna take along the beach. Take it right along the beach. So I am on some trails here. I don't know uh, how it's going to be. Hopefully I don't find myself in trouble, but hey, it's Michigan, what the heck, right? Yeah, the camera's not doing this justice, I'm sure. These are some pretty, uh... It's been a long time since I've ridden this kind of stuff.
okay that was pretty rough I'm not gonna lie and that was probably only oh maybe a, a half a mile <laughs> so for whatever reason me being lazy overwhelmed by not being in florida anymore i guess i did not install my microphone um so i'm gonna have to do a voice over here so i apologize for that uh, this is scenic drive headed north along the lake michigan shoreline um out of muskegon michigan and uh, it is May 6th, I believe it was. Um, the trees are starting to get some leaves on them. Obviously, uh, you can see there on my, my GPS, the route that I'm taking up through there. Um, yeah, the trees are starting to get some new growth on them. Usually, this is all uh, 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 canopied over with uh, oak leaves and maple leaves and and uh, it's a very beautiful ride. Obviously, you can see here this the, the, the dunes there. Believe it or not, those are sand dunes uh, um, that uh, the trees have grown in. Um, as we come up the hill, you will see the blockhouse right there. That is an old lookout from, oh, I, I don't even know when. That thing has been there, burned down multiple times, and... and uh, have been rebuilt multiple times. I know when I was a kid, we used to go in there and, and sign our names on the walls and everything else. And yeah, that's that's frowned upon these days. And they've cleaned it all up and it uh, looks a lot nicer now. Um, yeah, heading heading down the hill here from the, the block house. Uh, Scenic Drive is basically all this uh, just absolutely gorgeous ride twisting in and out of the dunes. So... Uh, Sorry about the microphone issue, but I uh, hope you enjoy the video here and uh, enjoy the sights. So for those of you with a keen eye here, you will notice that I am no longer riding the Harley-Davidson Pan America. Um, I have traded it in. Um, last time I took it out, I ended up with some issues with it. And uh, I, I took it off-road, got stuck in some deep sand, and I ended up stalling the bike. Um, after I stalled it, I tried to restart it, and it wouldn't start. It acted like the battery was dead, and uh, it just wouldn't turn over. So I turned it back off, and I kind of uh, let it sit for a minute, tried to restart it again. Same issue, would not start. So I turned it back off and let it sit for five minutes, uh, let things kind of cool down and recuperate a little bit and the third time I turned it back on it did restart um, but um, I ended up with a ride mode error and uh, I couldn't uh, change the uh, ride modes to get it back into off-road mode and um, I couldn't turn the traction control off so here I am stuck in this deep sand and, and the back tire wouldn't spin in order to get me out of the sand so um, I ended up letting it run for a little bit let it charge the battery up a little bit because I didn't want to have another issue with it not restarting so I shut it back off again and let it sit for another five minutes or so and I was finally able to restart it get the modes to work and I was finally able to get it out of the sand but unfortunately at that point um, the little yellow wrench light showed up on the dash, which usually means that my two-year mark is, is up and it's time to do some brake service and, and uh, a few other things. So um, at that point, my ride was over. I decided to just ride home. I was two hours away from home, so uh, um, by the time I got it home, I let it sit. It was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon when I got home. I ended up calling the dealership and made an appointment for the next day to drop it off and for them to uh, um, basically service it and I told them that my, my fuel pump was making some noise. So long story short, short they ended up um, replacing the fuel pump which they had to order and uh, they did a complete update on all of the uh, electronics 
modules and uh, they were able to clear the clear all the codes and reset everything um, but at that point I was kind of frustrated with the the bike at the time and um, I it was to the point where where I was throwing a code on that thing almost every time I took the bike out it was it was guaranteed that I was gonna have to stop on the side of the road somewhere to clear the codes and get it out of limp mode and and things I was just frustrated um, when I got the bike back it was at the shop for a week um, in order for them to order parts and everything so uh, at that point um, I uh, I went and and looked at this KTM this is the uh, the KTM super adventure or the 1290 super adventure R model uh, they both they had the R and the S in stock and and uh, um, I was torn back and forth between the two the S was pretty much the same thing as what the Harley Davidson was. Uh, the R model obviously is is made for uh, a little more off road um, capabilities. I I like the R better, so I ended up trading in the Harley Davidson on the uh, the KTM. And uh, at this point, I have about seven hundred miles on it, and uh, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a it's a it's a lot different bike. I'm not gonna say. Well, I am gonna say it. It to me, it's it's a better bike. Um, it rides better. It handles better. It it uh, performs better. Longevity wise, I guess we'll see what happens. But uh, um, yeah, I was just frustrated with Harley Davidson. So uh, um, so yeah, I'm riding a new KTM now. I apologize to all you Harley people, and I really don't want to lose subscribers, but uh, uh, I'm on to bigger and different things. I'm not going to say better yet, because I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a better bike or not. But right now, I'm happy with the decision, and uh, um, it has renewed my interest in, in riding. So uh, here I am, enjoying some Michigan weather. So as uh, Scenic Drive winds its way in and out of the uh, dunes, it does make its way back along to the shoreline here, along Lake Michigan. Um, up here we're coming to Duck Lake, and this is where my mom and dad would take us as kids to go swim in Lake Michigan. Because the water was too cold, we would sw swim in this little channel, channel up here, um, where the water is shallow enough, the sun would warm it up to where we could tolerate swimming in that kind of water. But yeah, Lake Michigan water is really cold, if you, uh, if you didn't know that already. And there is the USS Silversides. This is a World War II submarine that was brought here to the Great Lakes. Pretty cool. channel between Lake Michigan and Muskegon Lake. So this is what is referred to as the ovals. We used to come down here and hang out every weekend. Cause all sorts of trouble.
this. This is Silver Lake. It used to be a lot bigger. See over there, there's somebody running, running the dunes. for the summertime but it's not quite summer yet has all changed. This whole dune has pretty much taken over everything here. If I'm not mistaken, I believe there's a couple of houses buried underneath all of this. Like this one here is probably soon to be. or not private but the public access to where people can come in and ride the dunes that's the uh, main entryway to it this is all staging area So as always, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and uh, go check out these other videos right here.